Realme just launched the Realme X here in Beijing and I got my hands on a boxed unit of the Realme X. So in today's video, let's unbox it and spend some hands-on time with this Realme X. So guys, this is the box. So let's go ahead, peel that plastic off. It's all that Realme gray and yellow. The box looks quite muted, but classy. Let's slide that yellow band out and open up the box. Once I do that, we are greeted by another box. And here's where we find us some ejector pin. Then there are some regular information leaflets, all in Chinese since this is a Chinese unit. And then we have some kind of a hard case. The grip is rubbery, but it doesn't bend or anything. We then have the Realme X itself. Removing the protective plastic here, that back looks sweet. You know, it's that gradient with the S curvature there. It feels quite stylish. So how do you feel about that? And by the way, how do you feel about this video? If you do end up liking what you see, please do consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. And guys, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. Just a little FYI. So anyway, that gradient back, just like with the Realme 3 Pro, it's still plastic here. So are the sides and there are quite a few similarities with the Realme 3 Pro. The headphone jack for one, that remains, but we now get a Type-C port. And no, that doesn't mean we are sacrificing Book 3.0. I mean, you know what? Those are the last two things we find in the box, a Type-C cable and a Book 3.0 travel adapter. Now coming back to the Realme X again, the display, it is larger than on the Realme 3 Pro at 6.53 inches. It is now an AMOLED panel too, and it happens to still be covered by Corolla Glass 5. Uh, it looks great, the resolution is Full HD+, plus, so everything is quite crisp and sharp. Realme claims it is quite color accurate, and it covers 100% of the NTSC color gamut. Now if you've noticed, there is no notch here. So that's cause Realme has also gone in with a tucked in motorized selfie camera. And it is the same one from the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Sony IMX471 sensor, 16 megapixels F2. Realme claims this is covered by sapphire glass, so you don't have to worry about dust scratching it. And it has also been tested for 200,000 uses, so it's supposed to be quite durable. It takes only 0.74 seconds to pop out, so it's quite fast. And that's something you're gonna need, given that you need for it to pop out for face unlock. The other biometric option, now that's gonna be fingerprint, and this time it's under the display. And that is thanks in large to that AMOLED panel. This under the display fingerprint scanner here on the Realme X, it happens to be quite fast, no issues. I didn't really face any in the time I spent with it. So overall, there have been a lot of changes here. Type-C, no notch, pop-up camera, AMOLED, under, under the display fingerprint scanner. So from a build, from a feel perspective, the Real, Realme X, it feels quite different from the Realme 3 Pro, but it kind of has the same heart. As in, it's the same chip inside. The Realme X is also powered by the Snapdragon 710 chip. It comes in three RAM storage options, 464, 664, and 8128. The battery capacity here is 3,765 milliamp hour. So that's a bit of a con here, the, a larger display than the 3 Pro, but a 10% head in battery capacity. Another con would be the lack of a micro SD card slot. The Realme X only ha has support for dual SIMs. Now the fact that the internals haven't changed means we do still get the same solid performance as we got with the Realme 3 Pro. So the combination of Snapdragon 710 and ColorOS 6 built on top of Android 9 Pie, it kind of works really well. The Realme X feels super smooth to use uh, and we have seen that already with the Realme 3 Pro. So it should be pretty good for gaming too. Now we aren't done with the changes though because there is still one major change now that's with the rear cameras. The primary sensor is now 48 megapixel. And yes, it is the sensor that you're all expecting it to be, the Sony IMX586. It is coupled with the f1.7 lens. Now we've seen a lot of IMX586s. We, in fact, we've even seen a combination of the IMX586 with ColorOS 6 on the Oppo Reno. So, you know, we know it performs well. And my initial impressions, it kind of seems to perform well here on the Realme X as well. So overall, the images, they did turn out well, lots of detail, and you know, I'm really hopeful here.
From a video perspective, the Realme X can do 4K at 30 FPS and it also retains the 960 FPS super slow-mo from the Realme 3 Pro. So talking about the Realme 3 Pro, the Realme X kind of feels like a higher-end variant of the Realme 3 Pro. It's got quite a few advancements over the 3 Pro and given all that, I kind of expect Realme to be pricing this at about I don't know, 18,000 rupees. You know, for that price, it might be an alluring option, but anything more, and the fact that it is still a Snapdragon 710. Now, despite all the advantages, it's still at its heart is a Snapdragon 710, and that becomes a negative if the price difference becomes too high. As long as the price difference isn't too high, it feels like a great deal. Now, I did spend only a couple of hours with this phone, so uh, I'm not gonna really judge it till I get my hands on a review unit, because you know, once I get my hands on a review unit, I'll test it out in more detail and I will bring you guys more coverage on it. So do let me know what kind of videos you want to see about it. And I guess that's pretty much it for now. What are your thoughts about the Realme X? Let me know in the comments below and what do you feel about this video? Loved it, hated it, based on whatever you feel, go ahead, thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe if you haven't yet, ring that bell if you haven't done that. Here are a couple of videos for you to check out and also check out our other channel, FTJ. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.